everyone, and welcome back to Chattel Heath's very own podcast, Honest Hour. Here, six former students talk about their own personal experiences, anecdotes, and advice on different topics. I'm Salma, your host for today. Today's topic is on issues in the Middle East. Talking on this topic are Jadine and Amara. Now, let's jump straight into this episode. The countries Palestine, Yemen, and Jordan all share one thing in common. They are all suffering a humanitarian crisis in silence to the rest of the world. Let's begin with Yemen. Six years ago into an armed civil war between harsh governments that have killed over 18,000 civilians, 25% of these these being innocent children, Yemen remains the largest crisis in the world. Jadine, my first question to you is, how did the Yemeni conflict affect the people? So as a result, Yemen is experiencing, there is extreme poverty and there's a lot of food shortages. Um, Over 20 million people, so nearly two thirds of the population, are requiring um, food food assistance. Um, So that means that millions of children are pretty much dying. And it's actually very, very sad to think that this is their reality. Mm, the The conflict has also destroyed critical infrastructure. There's also not a lot of fuel and basic services, which has resulted in a weak state. Especially in um, 2020, there was extreme flooding, which killed a lot of the people and um, left many without homes. These really harsh statistics have truly opened my eyes and our eyes to how lucky we are. What's saddest of all is how innocent babies and kids are being killed through airstrikes, malnutrition and extreme hunger, sometimes having only one meal a day. This is really upsetting and you can even take a simple Google search online of Yemeni kids and it will show you kids starving on the brink of death on hospital beds that are really broken. It really makes us grateful for everything that we have in our life and it's really upsetting and heartbreaking to see such horrid images. Jadine, how do these statistics make you feel hearing them? Yeah, so these statistics are honestly so shocking. Um, As you mentioned, Salma, when I'm like looking at all these pictures of these children that are malnourished and that you really do like consider how lucky that we are to be born in this situation and it's funny because when I was younger my granddad always used to say to me I'll make sure you eat every grain so now I eat every grain of rice I make sure I eat everything on my plate make sure it's lit clean um and it's only now when I actually know what is happening about the world I actually understand why he would say that to me like before when I was younger I'd be like what are you talking about like if I don't want to finish my food I don't want to finish my food (laughs) but now I'm like I I feel like I should be grateful for everything I have and yeah just be so appreciative when you hear about what is going on and how shocking these um statistics are definitely and I feel like especially for me what makes it even worse is that a lot of us don't really know what's going on in the Middle East and it does make us feel really guilty inside I only came across this after doing history, after studying conflict in the Middle East. Before that, I had no idea what was happening there. And I'm really happy that we are educating the people. So Amara, have you heard any of these facts before and does it come as a shock to you? I've heard of the crisis on Instagram and social media because it is um, a prevalent issue, especially when you hear the statistics. When I was doing research for this, I found that um, half of the children under five are likely to suffer from some sort of malnutrition. That's so many children, if you think about it. And even here in the UK, when we were, um, during the pandemic, we were talking about giving children free school meals. And even that was such a big deal. So I can't even imagine what it's like for people in Yemen to not have that either. Thank you. And I feel like what's really important as well is social media. Our generation has been brought up on social media and that comes with so much positives. We are able to educate ourselves about how the world is suffering and different ways we can help them as well. It's okay to not fully know about how other countries are suffering and to educate yourself about what's happening. Two great websites to further read up on this conflict include the the Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International. Next, we go on to Jordan. One guaranteed right we have in the UK is freedom of speech, expression and assembly. Jadine, what basic human rights are the people of Jordan denied? So the Jordanian law criminalises speech um, deemed critical of the king, foreign countries, government officials and institutions. Um, Islam 
and Christianity and defamatory speech also. I feel like for us as citizens of the UK, this is totally unheard of. We're allowed to say whatever we want. We're allowed to practice whatever religion we want. We're allowed to criticise different institutions, including the government. And I feel like that's so important for society. Um, so, Jadeen, what are your opinions of this? How does it make you feel knowing that so much people are denied human rights? I think it's so crazy to think because um, where we are brought up, like even in school, having something like MUN, for example, and how we're able to express, like, even the kind of people we are through expressing what we believe in and things like that, sharing our opinions on that. So to think that that is not even allowed in other countries when it's a basic human right, it's what makes you human. We all have different opinions at the end of the day. We can't deny that. But to think that that is, like, um, criminalised, it's, it's crazy. Like, once again, it comes to the point of appreciating what you do have. And something as simple as having um, the freedom of speech is the fact that that can change lives and help us grow and help us learn. Like we're, they're never going to learn new things or think a different way if people don't have that chance to speak up. Um, so the fact that it's criminalised is is actually very quite it's quite sad. Thank you very much for that answer, Jadine. Um, so Amara, do you have any examples of how um, the Jordanian citizens' human rights have been denied? Um, in 2020, Jordan authorities prohibited reporting on local events, including publishing any news about the brutal killing of a woman by her father. Um, so what are your opinions? That was really this? sad. It's, I thought that was really sad, sad especially because during times of crisis, all people have is their voice and being able to spread awareness. So the fact that the Jordanian people went, were being denied this I, I can't, we can't see a world like that. Like we can't see a time like that because like JD was saying, it's so, it's there in our society and we don't, we can't imagine a time without it. So I just, I, I've like being grateful is a prevalent thing. A hundred percent. Human rights are entrenched within our law. Um, so much different news sources. They say everything that's happening every day. They inform us about the actions of our governments and they're able to criticise the actions of our governments. And it's really sad that some countries are oblivious to what their own government are doing to their own people, which is really hurtful for us as we're allowed to criticise any institution we want in England. So, Jadine, another problem Jordan is facing is a refugee crisis. Um, how badly has this affected them? Yeah, so um, since 2020, Jordan has accepted over 720,000 immigrants from surrounding countries. So like, um, for example, Syria, um, Syrian refugees. Um, and this has adversely affected child immigrants who have been struck by poverty and also lack of education. Um, so thank you for that answer. Um, I feel like it's so upsetting because although these people are seeking a better life in Jordan, it does affect them in many ways. In refugee camps, the standard of living is really poor and it's really low. Um, children don't have enough food for the week. They are not provided with proper education. And I saw a statistic online which said over a quarter of Syrian refugees in Jordan are denied education and they don't have education either because they simply can't afford it or they're forced to work from a young age, which is really upsetting. Amara, how does this make you feel knowing that children as young as the age of five are forced to start working? It's just shocking, especially in the UK. It's even more upsetting the fact that I could never imagine a life where I would be working at five. Even now working, it, it just seems I'm fortunate enough to not have to. So it's just a sad reality that um, a lot of people have to live with. And I think we should be grateful of our privilege that we have. Definitely. Yeah. I feel like we are so privileged at this age. Yeah. Anyone that wants a job now, they're doing it for extra money to make some extra money. Yeah. But in countries like Jordan, Palestine and Syria, they're doing it because they have to, because they're struck by poverty and they have no other choice, which is really upsetting for us. So our final country we'll be talking about today is Palestine. I'm sure many of you have heard about the current situation in Palestine from social media. Jadine, in what ways is Palestine currently suffering? So from airstrikes, 240 Palestinian citizens have been killed, unfortunately, um, and that includes 66 children, which is honestly so heartbreaking. Um, in Gaza, more than 
13,500 homes have been destroyed by bombings and at least 50 schools and 17 health facilities have also been damaged. So really pretty much lots of different areas of life have been like destroyed. Um, also, Israeli officials have blocked water and electricals leading to shortages. And what's most shocking is that when there are airstrikes, injured people are sometimes being denied access to a hospital so they can't even get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's totally unheard of for us. If we're ever in an accident, all we need to do is a simple 999 call, 911, and the ambulance is going to be with us within a few minutes and we're going to be taken straight away to hospital. But for Palestinians, that is only a dream. Um, they may call an ambulance, but the ambulance may be denied and they may not be able to seek refuge in a hospital in Israel, which is really upsetting. Um, Jadine, how does that make you feel hearing that? It honestly is just... Oh, it, I always come back to the theme, just being more appreciative of what we have. It's, our everyday life would honestly be a dream for these young children, these young people in countries such as Palestine. And the thing is, it's so horrible to think that some people won't appreciate what we have. Um, and it's just, it's sad because no one should have to grow up in a situation like that. and. I can't imagine the mental trauma and the mental health of some of these people too. It's honestly horrible. I saw this speech online. It was a Jack Petchy speech a few years ago and it was about this girl and it was titled Birds Not Bombs. So before Palestinian kids go to sleep, they hear the sounds of bombs, not birds like we do, which is really upsetting. That's the sound they yeah. hear when they go to sleep and the sound they hear when they wake up. And it's truly unimaginable. I can't imagine us being woken up in the middle of night, in the middle of the night, by bombs and the sound of guns, and that must be truly upsetting and have such a long effect for young kids and babies as well. I also oh. saw this thing on social media where the palace they would dress up in their best clothes so that if they do get bombed in the night, they would die wearing their best clothes, and also families would switch their children so that, like, some children would the children would survive and then uh, if the bombing and that's such a harsh reality that people have to live with that it's just heartbreaking to hear about. As I said earlier about social media we are truly shown different ways Palestinians are affected. Another video I saw which really hurt me was this five-year-old boy and he had a gunshot wound in his head because he was shot for marching for his own peace, which is a right that we should all have, but instead that was denied and sadly that boy did die. I saw another video where these Palestinian women, they go to sleep with their headscarves on. So if the Israeli authorities come to them in the middle of the night, at least they'll still have their modesty and their dignity on which is truly amazing and shows true courage and true strength. I, so I know. These statistics about Yemen, Jordan and Palestine are simply heartbreaking. However, there is one great way in which you can help. The trustable charities Muslim Hands, Islamic Aid, Human Appeal and Islamic Relief are all dedicated to long-term ways of solving these humanitarian problems. This includes money toward bread factories, providing sustainable income for citizens, olive trees um, and other sustainable business, food packages, water pumps and building hospitals and schools. Yeah, so what's so amazing about this, especially um, Islamic Aid, is that they provide food to 2 million people every month and have helped over 800,000 people access clean drinking water, which the fact that people need that is crazy. I can access that from my tap. Um, so yeah, it clearly shows that 100% of this money donating is reaching those people that are suffering the most as it should. From speaking to a lot of people, I've come to the con I've come to the conclusion that they don't really know how to help the people of Palestine, Jordan and Yemen who are suffering. They feel like they're very helpless, but these charities are honestly an amazing way to help them as you know that your money is totally going to a good cause. Islamic Aid have been working in Palestine since 1997, providing life-saving emergency aid, crucial nutritional, educational and psychological support to families in this region. As we come to the end of this episode, I believe it was very insightful to see how these three countries in particular are suffering and ways to help them. Remember to educate yourself on the problems other countries are facing and how you can make a change.
I would like to thank our speakers today, Amara and Jadine. I would also like to thank our editor, Nikhil. If you have any questions, remember to email them to Jadine at jadinegaria at gmail.com. And thank you so much for listening to today's episode.